one of the other questions somebody had was about, um, and I know you've gotten this one a lot, uh, flight paths. Um, how, how would it work? Wouldn't pilots know, you know, how, how, how would we be able to navigate and how do, how do flight paths, uh, flight paths work? Because, uh, you know, the, the flat earth model is completely different than the globe. So, uh, I'll, I'll give you a chance to get all into that. <laughs> yeah. The flight path thing is really interesting. There's a video called the long haul. That's part of, uh, Mark Sargent's series on the flat earth, uh, flat earth clues. I posted something on my Facebook page last night. Let me pull this up. Okay. This is what I, I, I love this. Um, there's a guy uh, that put this video up uh, recently. Let me see when he uploaded it. March 20th. Okay. So he was watching Mark Sargent's videos uh, about the long haul. And what Mark Sargent says in the long haul is, in the southern hemisphere, you cannot track flight paths. Now, you could go to the website and say, what is the flight path from, say, Sydney to Cape Town or whatever, or, or how are you flying from, you know, Australia to South America or whatnot, and they'll draw a nice pretty line on a map. Okay, that's a nice pretty line on a map. Now, prove it. So, when you go on these flight trackers, there are different websites that you can track flights all over the place. The southern flights all disappear. They, they take off from wherever they're going. They get so far off of whatever country they're flying off of and they get out over the ocean and disappear and they're gone until about an hour before their destination and they reappear now i didn't go out and try to confirm this myself i had interviewed mark Sargent and i watched his video and he talked about it and and provided evidence that he had done it but i didn't do actually actually go do it for myself but this other guy did and uh somebody shared this on my facebook page uh, yesterday, and so I'll share it here. Um, hopefully, there's no bad language. <laughs> this guy, I knew he starts swearing towards the end because he was like freaking out, like, why are we believing these people? Um, but anyway, here's. So, hey guys, I'm on planefinder.net. I'm tracking airplanes in the southern hemisphere, trying to do some research to verify or debunk this flat earth guy. And what he said is that airplanes disappear in the South Atlantic near the, you know, in the Southern Hemisphere when they fly over oceans. And it's true. I was tracking a British Airways flight from Buenos Aires to London. And I was tracking, I was tracking, and then it disappeared. And then I clicked on this plane right here, Qatar. See how the flight path, like when you click on the plane, the flight path uh, appears or disappears, right? So I clicked on this plane looking for my British Airways flight, and I found this flight. And look, see how the flight path just starts in the middle of nowhere right here? Anyway, you can, you can play it for yourself. But it's disappearing flights over South Atlantic confirmed. I didn't want to get into any swears if he starts going off. But, but I mean, you watch the video, and he's actually watching flight. He, you know, he's doing what we, he's testing it. You know, and he's going there and exactly like Mark said, he says, go on these websites, track these planes. You'll see, you know, they take off, they take off and boop, they disappear and they're gone for, you know, six hours or whatever. And then boop, they show up about an hour before the landing on the other side. And so, you know, I, I, all I can say is regarding the flight paths. Yeah, there's some great lines drawn on maps on aviation websites. Prove that that's the path that they're taking. I, you know, I, I haven't been able to prove it. I'm not, I've not been on one of those flights, so I don't know. Um, but when you, when you try to confirm it, I mean, I don't know how else you could confirm it because you do on the track. I mean, unless you're really good at tr of knowing exactly where you are when you're flying at 37,000 feet over an ocean, I mean, while you're sitting in a passenger seat, how in the world could you confirm that whatever path that they're taking is the path that was drawn on the, on the map? I, you know, I don't know, but I will say this. When I went to um, Kenya, we flew from Dallas to Atlanta, and then we flew from Atlanta over the, the, the coast of Greenland over to London, and then from London, we flew down to Kenya. Now, on a flat Earth map, that's a straight line. Wow, wow. <laughs> if you put it on the flat Earth, it's like straight line. Now, they, the, the counter argument to that, and fair enough, is that on a globe, sometimes it's a shorter distance because of the size of the globe. 
to go over the top this way than to go around the wider part this way. There's also commerce, you know, instead of flying just from Atlanta to Kenya, you know, airplane companies want to make money. So they pile a bunch of people that may be going to Kenya on a plane that goes to London to get a bunch of other people from London to go to Kenya, you know, okay. Commerce right, right. and, and the curve of the earth. Those are reasonable arguments too. Fair enough. But so is a straight line on a flat earth. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's like, so, you know, now it becomes somewhat problematic on the circle earth model, especially on the, on the, um, continents that are on the outer edge, you know, especially if you're going from like Sydney, Australia to Cape town. And if you're going on the, on the outside of the, of the rim, you know, that's mm -hmm. a seriously long journey. Yeah. But the, yeah. Question, the question is, are they, or are they kind of doing this? I mean, on a flat earth, it may be a straight line to kind of come up over Indonesia and, and kind of, you know, I, I don't know. There was another, um, map that somebody sent me from um, the, uh, around the world race. You know, they, they get in these boats and they, they race around the whole world. And yeah, yeah. Uh, the map showed 6,000 miles. Uh, I'm rounding the numbers here. It was about 6,000 miles from uh, Sydney to Cape Town on the path that they the boats were taking. And then from Cape Town up around Africa and over to the top to Europe, let's say to... Scotland. Uh, I don't know if that was where it was, but up there, it said it was like 5,000 miles, that leg uh, of the race. Well, if you go on Google Earth and plot that out with the, the, the ruler on Google Earth, which is allegedly a depiction of our Earth to scale, it was more like 7,000 miles on, on Google Earth. So in other words, it was longer to go from Cape Town to uh, Scotland than it was from Cape Town to Australia <laughs> on a globe on a flat earth. It's all truncated and the 5,000 being shorter than the distance to uh, Australia actually made sense. So, uh, you know, I don't know, dude. <laughs> it's Yeah. It's, it's a lot to think about it. Yeah. There, there's uh, definitely a lot of good, uh, a lot of good points and a lot of good questions. Um, someone well, else. Here, uh, oh, go ahead. Regarding the, the flights disappearing. Uh, and the yeah is supposedly because there's no GPS satellites or whatever tracking them. Well, I've had three independent witnesses tell me unsolicited that GPS is ground-based. And one of them, uh, my, my friend John Gabrielson has a friend who's a 15-year veteran still in the military, in the Air Force, and his job is, uh, is in the GPS field, and he's in constant communication with the pilots of AWACS um, uh, airplanes. Those are big airplanes that have the rotating disc on top. Uh, he's in constant contact with these guys. I mean, the, the job that he does requires somebody to be on duty, to be in constant 24-7 contact with the AWACS. And he told John, unsolicited, had nothing to do with Flat Earth, but John basically said, you know, I heard a rumor that the GPS is, is all ground-based. And without even flinching, this Air Force guy says, oh, yeah, absolutely. It's totally ground-based. Everything's ground-based. Ground-based in the sense that we, we, it's terrestrial with AWACS, planes, and drones, and other uh, in-atmosphere um, things, not satellites. And when he asked him about satellites, he said, all the guy did was kind of grin at me like, uh, we can't talk about that. So, wow. You know, what, what do you think about that? I don't know. But I do know this, that even in the Orion project, the, the current project that NASA is working on, they, in the video, when they talk about the tra trajectory after they launch Orion, once it goes over the Indian Ocean, they lose contact for an extended period of time. And I'm going, well, how convenient is that? And that's always been the case. When, the, when Apollo, when the shuttles, whenever they after they launch, there's a period, uh, oh, there's a window where everybody loses contact with everybody and they can't, they can't connect with each other. Well, I mean, if I was to play the conspiracy card, that's really convenient for them to switch over technology or whatever.